What would you do if a coworker screamed at you, belittled you, called you names, shut you out, brought you to tears, and then laughed when he told you to cry all you want, that he didn't feel one bit sorry for you, and let you know with utter conviction that if you went to HR, they would choose him? Is time really up? Not if you ask one of Toronto's most popular broadcasters. I'm here with Rita DeMontis to break down the latest media harassment scandal. This time it's in our own backyard. Uh, former Q107 radio personality and Global News co-host Jennifer Valentine names her radio host John Derringer in a human rights complaint. Chorus has suspended Q107's Derringer in the morning amid an external ethics and conduct review. The former Breakfast TV fave didn't name names on her video but she raises some serious issues. So Rita, let's talk about this. Were you surprised that Rita, um, Jennifer had the courage to release this video on the weekend? Uh, so full disclosure here, they're both my friends, Jennifer Valentine and John Derringer, for many, many years. I, I was surprised. I applaud her for her courage, but this is like an iceberg. We're only seeing the tip of the iceberg and there's many, many layers involved here they go back a long time. It's, it's heartbreaking. You know, I like them both. And, and even coming out and saying, you know, I am a fan of John Derringer, but I was not aware that he had anger management issues at all. Even though I was his editor for many years, he wrote a lovely column for The Sun. And I love Jennifer Valentine. Jennifer's joy was being a people person and that's where she shone. And that's where she was amazing. And it doesn't make sense what she was good at, where she helped the company she worked for, in this instance, Breakfast Television, why her position suddenly disappeared. So there's so many layers to this story and it's going to go on for a long, long time. So you mentioned you worked with John Derringer. So how many years did you do that for? And did you ever have an issue with him? Uh, I never had an issue. He was always very polite. He was always, um, uh, concise. His writing was pristine. He'd laugh and tell me his mother was a grammar teacher. Um, he was, I was on a show several times. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but as always, I, I'm an outsider looking in and he loved to write. So we had a, a pretty symbiotic relationship. On the same level, I would be on breakfast television quite a bit. And Jennifer Valentine and I would meet at, you know, I wrote a column called uh, Shock Till You Drop. And Jennifer basically did the same thing among many things for BT. And we'd meet and I found her to be a sparkling person. She would look at people and make them feel like the most, they were the most important person in her life, in her moment. And that's a gift. So this is why this is like a Greek tragedy in a way. There's just no winners when you think about it. Well, I think the winner might be that she's brought the issue to the forefront. I mean, there's four other women, three other women who chimed in on Saturday who also worked with John Derringer and named names and also spoke of being treated badly. Again, nothing is proven right now, but were, were you surprised that many more women chimed in? Um, what I'm surprised at, at, at how quickly it happened. I would have assumed, I, I see Jennifer being Canada's voice now and kudos to her. And she is a, a, a hero, heroine, and uh, I think she is, I, and deep down inside, as per her video, she did it for her mom, her late mother, and for her daughter. So good for her for doing this. I think this is critical because this is happening as we speak. You know that, Jane. You know this is taking place in small companies and big corporations across Canada, across the world. And this is just a small, small microcosm of what is going on. It's a mindset that, unfortunately, will it be changed? I don't know. I hope so. But we'll see what happens. But they say it's going to take another 100, 200 years to attain full equality. What are we waiting for? And so, yes, kudos to Jennifer for putting a voice and a name. And that is very courageous for what she has done for doing this. Yeah, I'm, I mean, consider myself lucky. I started in radio in Vancouver in the late 80s, and I had a male boss who was nothing but uh, wonderful to me. We're still in touch to this day, uh, treated all of us. So there's quite a few, it was quite a female heavy newsroom with respect. Um, I'm shocked in 2020, this 2022, this is still, this kind of behavior is still tolerated. Uh, again, alleged behavior. 
do you think Derringer will ever return to the radio? It's a tough one. I could see him. I could see him wanting to redeem himself. I don't think that's going to take place. It's going to be a, a long, hard scrabble up that hill. Now, here's the thing, Jane. If everybody knew this guy was doing this, why didn't they speak up? The real problem was the one they had been sweeping under the rug, the one they had been avoiding for years. So they're just as culpable. Anyone who participated in this type of, of uh, you know, bullying, they should be held accountable. And that's from the smallest guy who was in the room with her all this time to the top brass. So this isn't just a a one-on-one, -on -one. This, this, there are layers involved here. So uh, if he doesn't make it, neither should everyone else who supported him. Um, and also, do you think uh, Jennifer's uh, trajectory for work has changed now? Do you think we'll see her back on the airways? I could see her taking on a much more leadership role. I could see her on a speaking circuit. I think many people will want to talk to her about her experiences and how to make them better. I could see her going into boardrooms and saying, well, this is what you're doing right and this is what you're doing wrong. And I think you start with being, uh, for being in the communication industry, we don't communicate. So I think this is a really wonderful time for Jennifer because she will be able to spread this messaging and help others because that's at the core of Jennifer Valentine's being. Is she just likes to help people. And I can't think of a better way of her to be helping people. And just so everyone's straight, what kind of column did John Derringer write for you? It was a lifestyle column. It was about his life. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was a good read. It was a really well received and, uh, he was a pretty, uh, I remember he went on a, um, a motorcycle ride across California and his experiences. He's, uh, he's just a, a, all around, you know, if, I, if I'm just as shocked as everyone else, but then I wasn't in that environment. So I can't really lend anything because it's, it's sad. It's like, um, it's like a betrayal in a way, but like anything else. So, you know, I always, it's one of those things, but it's happening everywhere. And I think it's, uh, you know, still waters run deep. I think we're going to see a lot more happening in the coming days. What I'm, what I, as a, as a woman who has been in situations that have been uncomfortable uh, in my past, uh, in, in a work environment, I'm hoping that this will help others. I hope it just doesn't become yesterday's news. I think we need to pay it forward so that, young people going into this industry will know that they will have their backs will be guarded and that's what we need to tell people you shouldn't be afraid to go to work you shouldn't have to throw up before you start your job and yet many of us did mm -hmm. well uh thanks rita for your insight and particularly since you know both uh parties in this particular case let us know what you think on twitter and facebook and please subscribe to our youtube channel sometimes enough is enough <laughs>